Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Gerf Morlix. He's going to share a story about having a heart attack before a gig in Florida. I was on tour in Florida, and I had a day off in Tampa. Uh, going to go fishing with my friend Bruce, and we hooked his boat up to the back of his pickup, and uh, we were heading for the Tampa Bay, going to put the boat in, and and he pulled over at this place to go in and get some sandwiches, and I was just stayed in the truck, and I was sitting in his truck, and suddenly I had this very uncomfortable feeling, and it went from my left shoulder to my right shoulder, just like, like you know, when you get a crick in your neck or your back or something, you just, you figure you can move and it'll go away, and uh, it went away, it lasted about 15 seconds or something, and I just, you know, it was, it was not like anything I'd ever felt before. And I said, well, I don't know what that was. Um, I hope it never happens again. And it was seemed so inconsequential that when Bruce got back in the truck, I didn't tell him that I had felt uncomfortable or anything. It just it went away. We went fishing. And so the next day I had a gig in Orlando. And I was, I got up and I was getting ready to get in the shower. And I turned the water on, took all my clothes off. And all of a sudden, I was just about to step in. All of a sudden, I had this thing again, shoulder to shoulder. But this one was kind of painful. Same, I knew it was connected. And I thought, now that, I don't know, but that might be a heart attack. I'm not sure. But I decided that um, being naked and wet was not a good idea. So I turned the water off. I didn't get in the shower. And like I said, this one was painful. And But this one lasted like... 30 seconds or something, 40 seconds, I don't know what it was, it, and, but then it went away. But I was thinking, that, that could have been a heart attack. I, I, I got to get this checked out, but it went away. So I thought, well, you know, I could drive, my gig was at like one in the afternoon, like a house concert in Orlando. And I thought, well, I could go do the gig, come back to Tampa, spend the night and then the next morning check into a hospital and see if I'm okay, you know? And I thought, well, if I'm driving over from Tampa to Orlando, uh, I, I had known somehow that chewing aspirin is good if you're having a heart attack. So, I, and I didn't have any aspirin. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll stop on the, on the way there and I'll get aspirin just in case it happens again. And, and I actually got off the interstate a couple of times and went into these stores and they didn't have any aspirin. They had every pain reliever known to man, but no bare aspirin. And so, so twice I had failed. And so then I'm just driving along and all of a sudden I'm in this giant um, traffic jam trying to get around Disney World. And I'm dead stopped in the fast lane, just cars are just creeping along, you know, and all of a sudden it happens again although this time was the most pain I'd ever felt in my life. Same exact thing, shoulder to shoulder. And I'm going, I, I'm having a heart attack. This is awful. And I thought, oh, I could, I could call 911, but I'm in a traffic jam. They won't be able to get to me. And uh, so I put my right turn signal on, and as cars inched up, I finally it took maybe a minute or so, I got into the middle lane. And I put my right turn signal on again, and as cars inched up, took another minute or more, I got into the slow lane, and I just went to the shoulder, and I zoomed up the shoulder going about 90 miles an hour and came to the exit, first exit I came to. And I got off. I'm coming around this curve on the exit, and I saw a Florida tourist shop, a place that I would never go in. Like, I, you know, they have sunglasses and stupid t-shirts and you know oversized sunglasses and you know just just a tourist trap and, but then i thought tourists are hung over they'll want aspirin they're going to have aspirin in this shop so i'm still having this intense pain really really hurt most pain i'd ever felt and so i go into this place and maybe i was kind of lightheaded or something but the place was lit with black lights inside, I think. It seemed like it was. And I, I looked around and I remember finding bare aspirin in this, this rack of 
pain relievers and I just broke into the box and I started chewing them dry. I think I ate seven or eight maybe. And then it was awful. I mean, I don't know if you ever even tasted the slightest bit of aspirin tablet, it's awful. And I, I chewed seven or eight and swallowed them dry and went up to the counter and paid for the aspirin. I don't know why I didn't think to buy water too, but I was, I was, I was compromised at the moment, you know. And I get to the counter and there's this big, dumb 19-year-old kid working there. And I, and I thought, well, I could tell him that I'm having a heart attack and he could call 911. And then I thought, I don't want to die in a Florida tourist shop. I would rather die in my little rent car. So I paid for the aspirin and I went out to the rent car to die. And I got in the rent car and it passed. It, it had lasted at least five minutes, intense pain shoulder to shoulder. And then I thought, okay, um, it passed. Um, 10 minutes from the gig. Now I, I better find a hospital. So I put a hospital into the GPS and I remember it was uh, 4.8 miles back down the other side of the freeway that didn't have a traffic jam on that side. And so I screamed down there. I was going 95 miles an hour and I got off at the first exit and wound around and I found this hospital uh, in, a, in a town called Celebration, Florida. And I was celebrating. And so I find the emergency room. I pull up there. There's a sign that says valet parking. And I thought, oh, man, I, I hope I have some ones or a five or something. Well, what if I don't, you know? And, and there were two cars stopped there right at the valet parking sign. And I, so I parked behind them and waited a minute or two and there wasn't any action, so I got out and I walked up and I looked at each car. There was no one in those cars. There was no valet person. I looked in the door, I couldn't see anything. I got back in my car and I drove. And I found the main parking lot of the hospital, which was like maybe a quarter mile away or something. And I put my guitar in the trunk and organized what I had. And I said, if I'm gonna be in here for a while, I want my laptop, uh, my phone, got all my stuff and walked back to the emergency room. And I walked in the front door and this kind of a young guy came up to me and I, I said, I think I just had a heart attack. And he said, are you a doctor? I said, no. And he said, well, then why not let us make the diagnosis? Like, wow, oh, welcome, to, welcome to Celebration Florida, you know. Anyhow, they, um, they checked me out and they, they did like an EKG thing, you know, they put the things on you. And, and they said, well, we'll be back in a while. So I called the gig and I said, I might've had a heart attack. Um, if they come in and clear me, I can be there in 15 minutes. And the guy said, oh, that's great. There's people came out from out of the woodwork, you know, we got a big crowd. And, uh, and then they, you know, they came back like a half an hour later. They said, you had a heart attack and you're going to need a stent. And I, I guess they took me for x-rays and stuff. And, and uh, anyhow, they decided to put a stent in, and I waited all of that day, and they didn't do it. And they were going to do it the next day, and then there was some sort of problem. They didn't get to it the next day, and then they, on the third day, they had to ambulance me over to another branch of the hospital for some reason. And so I got to ride in one of those big ambulances, a video in out the back, and I'd never been in an ambulance before, and that was kind of fun get to the hospital and uh, they prep me for this stent procedure. The surgeon comes in and I talked to him for about 20 minutes. He was really smart, really sharp. He was from Fort Worth, Texas. I liked him a lot. And he explained everything that was gonna happen. He had a little team of a couple of assistants and, and he said, you know, you're gonna be conscious during this stent procedure. Uh, I have to talk to you. We're gonna, we're gonna give you a relaxant uh, so you'll be somewhat sedated, but what we're going to do is uh, enter through your groin and go up an artery. We're going to open an artery and go up with a camera and the stent, and we're going to go up the right side in this artery, and we're going to go over the top of your heart, and then we're going to go down into the lower left quadrant, which is where you had your blockage, 
And he said, you had what's, what's known as the widow maker. He said, you're lucky to be here. And it, well, there was a video screen right next to me. I'm sitting on the table at this point. And he said, you can watch as the camera goes up, you know, and we're going to, you'll see all this. So um, they shave me and they're ready to open an artery. And he said, oh, by the way, um, I do this all the time. This, I'm the stent doctor. And this is what I do all day long. It's kind of run of the mill procedure, you know. But since we're opening an artery, if you were to like lose control and start thrashing around or something, you could bust a gusset and bleed out in about a minute and die. And I said, no movement here, you know, fine, do your stuff. So here we go, and he's entering my groin, and, uh, and I realized there was music on in the operating room as they're opening my artery, and it was uh, Desperado by the Eagles. And I thought, oh, man, this guy just told me that I could die. And what if I die and the last thing I hear before I go is Don Henley? I can't, I can't live with that. And I, so I thought about asking him to change the music. And then I second-guessed that, and I thought, no, if he wants opera on, I want my surgeon comfortable. I want him to have whatever he wants. You know, he, can, he can play Barry Manilow, and I'll, I'll put up with it if he does a great job. So I'm laying there on the table. I'm looking at the video screen. It's fascinating. And he gets up, getting ready to go into the heart. He goes, all right, we're, we're going to do this now. And uh, you're going to have the heart attack pain again. But it's only going to last 15 or 20 seconds. And as soon as I get the stent into place, it'll open up. You won't have any blockage. And you'll immediately feel normal. And I said, OK, no thrashing here. And suddenly, I'm having it again, the heart attack symptoms again. And this was the worst one. And it was the same exact thing, shoulder to shoulder. This is where blood wasn't flowing to. And I was trying really hard not to thrash it. I think I, it was really awful. And I think I was moving around a little bit. And then I realized that the song that was playing in the operating room at that moment was I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. And I thought, ah, that's a song. I can die to and live with.